Hello, my name is Nate, and today I'm going to be talking about what is civil engineering. Um, every day, we use things that are designed by civil engineers. Um, engineering is quite a complex field, and I hope to give the audience an in-depth look at the civil discipline, mostly dealing with structural engineering and what it involves. Um, I feel that too many people take for granted uh, the buildings and the skyscrapers that have been designed by civil engineers and the things that we do. Um, so this is very important to me. And uh, according to the American Society of Civil Engineers, civil engineering touches many aspects of our everyday lives from the water you use to brush your teeth in the morning to the road you drive on and the school where you take your children and the power that charges on your cell phone. Um, after I summarize exactly what civil engineers do, I'm going to relate it to how they operate in real life and show how a civil engineer and how their career can advance. Uh, there are multiple types of civil engineering and they're all related. We have a wet side and a dry side. Um, on the wet side, we have environmental and fluid mechanics. Typically, an environmental engineer would uh, design this is a, a circular clarifier for a wastewater treatment plant. This is just one thing, one thing of, of many that us environmental engineers would be involved in designing. Um, they are mainly there to make sure that the water that you get is going to be clean, uh, whether it's for drinking water or for bathing or whatever. Um, so they're definitely involved in our safety. Fluid mechanics uh, is a type of engineering that involves stormwater drainage um, and water runoff. In this picture, you'll see a low-lying area that has uh, a stormwater system here where all this water is being taken out and it's going to be distributed to nearby streams. Uh, if it weren't for water resource engineering, then a lot of that water might end up in your basement. Uh, so mo moving on to the uh, dry side of engineering, we have transportation. McGill University says that the duties of a transportation engineer are to plan, design, build, operate, and maintain systems of transport in such a way as to provide for the safe, efficient, and convenient movement of people and goods. So if it has to do with moving people or goods, then a uh, transportation engineer is involved. So we see mass transit here, and also we have uh, pavement. This is terribly cracked pavement, so the pavement engineer would be uh, transportation and, and they would design the pavement so that it would not crack and it would not do that. Um, they're also heavily involved in designing airports and systems like that. Uh, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology defines a geotechnical engineer as a civil engineering discipline that is concerned with building on, in, or with soil and rocks. And a great example of geotechnical engineering here is a picture I have of the Hoover Dam. Um, it was a phenomenal display of geotechnical engineering, and quite honestly, it was an engineering feat, the Hoover, the Hoover Dam. And there are all, all these engineering forms are all related, and this is a good application to prove that because you have your water resource engineering, and you also have geotechnical, you have structural here, and just about all types of engineering are involved. Uh, the last piece that I did not explain yet is structural engineering, and that's what I want to get into mainly um, in my career. And uh, structural engineers would design a building. Uh, this is a typical skeleton of a building where there's you know deck slabs and columns that the, the structural engineer would um, design. Now I'm going to explain the real world construction process and how it relates to what structural engineers do. The construction process is based on hiring a qualified staff that can turn ideas into new buildings. And uh, the first crucial staff member is going to be your architect and engineer. I put them together, but they are actually quite different. Uh, the Institute of Structural Engineers came up with a simple way of differentiating between the two. And they said, in a nutshell, if a structure was a human body, then the architect will be concerned with the body shape and appearance, and the structural engineer will be concerned with the skeleton and sinews. So the architect is mainly worried about the aesthetics and the appearance of the building, and the structural engineer wants to make sure that it's safe for everyone to go in. Um, 
The next most crucial uh, staff member on any construction project is going to be your construction manager. A construction manager's purpose is clearly defined by Frederick Gold in the textbook Construction Project Management. And he says they work as part of a design build team responsible for delivery of the entire project from concept to completion. So this means that they're in charge of the cost. If it goes over cost, they're going to get in trouble. If it goes past a certain schedule or the deadline, doesn't meet the deadline, they're going to be in trouble. And they're also responsible for the quality of the work done. Uh, your final most crucial staff member on any construction project is going to be your contractors, and they build what is on the plans drawn by the engineers and architects. Now I'll explain the real world, oh, excuse me. As in most fields, civil engineers have an opportunity to advance their careers, and uh, career advancement is based on the type of certifications that you have and also what you like to do. Uh, so graduating from college, you might start out as an EIT or an engineer in training, and you work on uh, CAD projects or small projects like guardrails and soil testing. But after working as an EIT for about four years, you can, if you pass the uh, professional engineering exam, you'll become a PE, and you, you'll take on more responsibility. And you'll also be in, involved in larger design projects like bridges or buildings or foundations. Um, and also, your career advancement also depends heavily on what you want to do. So toward the end of the civil engineer's career, uh, they might really like design, so they might want to get into uh, leading design projects as a senior designer. Uh, they could also become a college professor, and they could become construction manager or project manager, as I just talked about, about a minute ago. And finally, they can run for office as a county engineer. So hopefully now you guys have a better understanding of what exactly structural engineers do. Uh, next time you cross a bridge or visit the beautiful cities, just remember that none of these things would be possible if it weren't for structural engineers. So thank you all for listening, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Um, and to my virtual audience, just feel free to ask me on Blackboard. And that's it. Thank you.